remember I told you that we must have a vulnerable machines that we can scan. And before we actually proceed to performing scanning and covering different tools that we will use, let us first see where we can get a vulnerable machine and how we can install it. And trust me, it is pretty easy. So just type top 10 vulnerable machines and you will see this rapid 7 link that says 10 places to find vulnerable machines for your lab. Click on that link. And down here, if I scroll all the way down, I should see a list of 10 different vulnerable machines that we can use as a hacker to practice our skills. And for this section, we're going to be going with the first one. So the name of it is Metasploitable. Click on it and it will route you to another page of Rapid7 website and it will tell you Metasploitable virtual machine to test. You can read through this if you want as it tells you some of the information about the Metasploitable. But what's the most important part is down here, in order to download this machine, you must fill in this information. Now it is up to you what information you will fill, right here. But as soon as you fill all of this, you can click on submit and it will lead you to a page where you can download Metasploitable. Up here, it tells us that Metasploitable is free to use after we fill out the form. So this is something that you must do in order to download it from the official website. And after you finish downloading it, you should finish up with a file that looks something like this. So Metasploitable Linux zip. You want to extract this file, as you can see I have already extracted it, and you should see these files right here. This vmdk file is our hard disk that we are going to use in a virtual machine. So let's see how we can install it. Go open up your virtual box, and we want to be creating a new virtual machine. We already know how to do that, click on this new button right here, and it will ask us for the name of virtual machine and the operating system. You can name it anything you want, I will just name it Metasploitable 2. And the reason why I'm naming it 2 is because I already have it installed right here, so the names differ. In the type of operating system you want to select Linux, and in the version of operating system you want to scroll all the way down and select other Linux 64-bit. Once you got these settings ready, click on next, and this is what they talked about. These virtual machines will use very little hardware resources from your physical machine. That's why for this virtual machine, for the Metasploitable, we can leave 512 megabytes of RAM. It is more than enough for this machine to run. It will even work if you lower it to 256 megabytes of RAM. But 512 is recommended, so let us leave it on 512. And if you don't have this much RAM to use, you can leave it on 256. Then proceed on next. And in this step, instead of creating a virtual hard disk now, we want to use an existing virtual hard disk. Once you select this option, click on this icon right here, and click on add. Then find your virtual hard disk wherever you got Metasploitable downloaded. For example, I got it on my desktop, right here. Here it is, find this VMDK file, select it, and then select it right here again, and click on choose. Once you do that, you can click on create. And this is pretty much it, we got our Metasploitable created. All we are left to do right now are two things. The first thing is navigate to settings, go to the network settings, and switch from NAT to bridged adapter, the same thing we did with our Cal Linux machine. Then choose your adapter, and click on OK. This will just make our Metasploitable 2 IP address belong to the IP range of our network. Once you do that, click on start. And this will start the process of installing Metasploitable for you. Unlike in Cal Linux, right here, you don't need to do anything. This will install machine on its own, and it will take about a minute or two, maybe even less. So at the end, after this finishes, it should prompt us with a login. And you will notice that this machine doesn't have a desktop or anything else, it is a command line machine. That means we can only navigate through this machine using commands. And those commands are simply terminal commands. So just picture this as one big terminal. As we can see, 
the installation has finished and down here we got Metasploitable login. And if you read through this website, right here, if you read through this paragraph, it tells us right here that the Metasploitable login is MSF admin and the password is also MSF admin. So let's try it out. Go to our machine, type MSF admin and under password, again MSF admin. And here we are. We managed to log into our Metasploitable. Just to check our network, type I've config, and it will tell me that my IP address is 192.168.1.3. That is because I set it to be over bridged adapter. And if we try to ping Google, for example, it will work. So our machine is set up and it is ready to be scanned and attacked. You see, this was pretty simple to do. And in the next video, we are ready to start our scanning process. See you there. Okay, so we know what scanning is. We also created our virtual machine that is vulnerable. And now we are ready to see what information can we get by scanning that machine. But before we scan a single machine to discover open ports, we must first discover what machines we got on our network. So the first part of scanning a network is to figure out how many hosts you have active and what are their IP addresses. In this case, we are going to act as if we got a task to scan our home network. And we want to discover vulnerable machines within our home network. So let's start by seeing how many hosts we got active first. There are many ways that we can go about doing this. Since I know that all the possible hosts for my network must go in range from 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.1.255. Since my IP address starts with these three first numbers, let me just type the password and here it is, 192.168.1. This is the part that doesn't change. And to scan all 254 hosts inside of my network, I can just go and ping each and every one of them and see whether they respond to our pinging or not. If they respond, they are online. If not, they are offline. But what if I had to test more than one network? What if I had 10 more networks besides this one that I need to test? Am I about to try to ping every possible host from all those networks? Of course not. That's why we are going to use different tools to perform this much faster. Let us try with the first tool called ARP. Now, ARP is a tool in Cal Linux, but it is also a packet. ARP packets are used in discovering hosts on the network, but more about them later on once we get to the man in the middle section. For now, just remember that they are packets for discovering hosts. Before we use this ARP tool, make sure your Metasploitable is started up. And in case you got some other devices that you can connect to the internet, Connect them just so we can get various output and try to figure out which IP address belongs to which host. Now, our ARP tool works based on those ARP packets that I mentioned. So if I type ARP dash dash help and press enter, it will tell me command not found. Now this is because I must run the tool with sudo privileges. So sudo ARP dash dash help and here is the tool. It doesn't have too many options, we got dash A which displays all hosts in alternative BSD style, dash E, display all hosts in default, Linux style. And these options down here are not something that we are interested in. All we want to do is use this dash A option. So if I go down here, clear the screen and type sudo arp dash A, it will tell me it only discovered my router. But why is that? I got my Metasploitable running, I also got my laptop running, so it should be discovering other hosts as well. Sometimes we must ping a host first before it appears right here, since this information is being read from our ARP tables. So if I, for example, try to ping my Metasploitable, it will get responses back. And if I run ARP-A again, now we will see that we got an entry for the Metasploitable inside of our ARP tables. So this tool doesn't seem to be that good for discovering hosts. Sometimes it will have all the hosts available since you already communicated with them before, but sometimes it seems that we must ping the host first before it shows them. That's why a much better option is tool called 
netdiscover. To run netdiscover, we can simply type sudo netdiscover inside of your terminal, press enter, and this tool will find all of the available devices on your network on its own. You don't have to ping anything, you don't have to communicate with anything, you can just leave this tool to run and it will find all the devices on your network. So right here it managed to find 5 of them. We can see up here that it is still scanning and it is just scanning different subnets, so it already finished mine and you can control C this if you already see the result, since this will scan all the usual subnets that occur in a network. Right here we see that we captured 5 ARP packets and there are ARP requests and ARP replies, but once again more about that later. This just means that we managed to discover 5 hosts using these packets and these are those 5 hosts. Let me control C this since it won't really manage to find any more hosts. And right here we got their IP addresses, their MAC addresses and their MAC vendor name or host name. So right here I know that this is my Metasploitable, which is this one. This one IT2.168.1.7 is my host machine or my physical machine that I'm running my Cal Linux on. These two down here are two laptops I believe. And this right here is my router. And how do I know that this is my router? Well, usually routers start with the first number. Either it will be something like dot zero or dot one. And just so you can be sure which IP address is your router, you can type the command netstat nr. And under this gateway column, we should see the IP address of the router. So you can see they do match. The next step would be to go about scanning each and every one of them. And for this, we're going to be scanning our Metasploitable. And you can also scan your home machines just for even more practice. See you in the next video.